Any recording artist who has just received a record label advance faces many challenges. Nobody really tells creatives what to do with these advances. They just wing it. Now, on the one hand, you got to figure out how to make some sound financial decisions with this advance and not compromise your creative integrity. On the other hand, you kind of got to make the best use of this advance or it's just going to deplete really, really fast. And that's no joke. But the key thing is, how do you stay true to the artistic envision while you have to navigate through this ever changing music industry landscape and your career inside of that landscape. And that's what we're going to talk about right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. And yes, I've been through this process with an artist and a lot of money came from it. But then the thing was, on the way up, there was so many you know, tricks and turns and leaps and bounds and all this stuff that, you know, rivers we had to cross just to keep the money flowing in. And it was very tough. It was very difficult. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to use that knowledge and I'm going to put it into today's video. So check it out. All right. So step one with this advance is we got to understand the terms of the record label advance here. So before signing any contracts, it's crucial to understand the terms of the record label advance, all right? This includes knowing whether the advance is recoupable or non-recoupable, which determines if you're required to pay back the advance from future royalties, okay? And in most cases, it's going to be recoupable against your future royalties. That, that's just to be honest, all right? But you want to be aware of how your royalties will be affected by the advance as well, as this can impact your long-term earnings. So what I'm saying by this is this advance, the bigger it gets is the longer it pushes out your future earnings. It pushes it way out there, right? And when that happens, it's like, it's almost like, okay, I'm living with, this is the only check that I'm going to get off my music pretty much for a long time if it doesn't make any sales, okay? That's why you have some artists who maybe recoup in 10 years and then it's like, okay, now we're getting the, the trickling checks coming in, but some artists are getting advances so big that they never will ever see any royalties, period. Okay, so you've got to think about, okay, how big do I want this advance to be? And then remember that, okay, I still have to sell other things to make more money. This goes back to my being a broke artist is a choice video that I put out maybe two months ago. So let us continue here. By thoroughly understanding the details of the advance, You'll, bet, you'll be better equipped to make informed decisions and ensure a successful partnership with your record label. All right. So like I'm saying, the advance, you and I have to live out that advance for a while. But you also have to understand that you have to sell more product other than the, the and, and just other than just taking the advance check. All right. Step two is to create a budget and allocate the advance wisely. So proper financial planning is essential for effectively managing your record label advance. Remember, it is just one check for future earnings of the sale of your audio products, your albums, LPs, digital streams, all that stuff. So you want to start by setting a short term, a short and long term goal for your music career and allocate the advance accordingly. OK, here are my short term goals on what's going to happen. And this is what I want to use the advance for. And here are my long term goals. And this is how I'm going to stretch my advance. You get what I'm saying? This may include funds for production, marketing, and personal expenses. Pause for a second. And I'm going to get on this in a minute, but the funds that you're going to use for production are not your music production. Your record label has that taken care of. The marketing for your music, your record label has that taken care of. What I'm saying is your personal production, like your content production, your personal marketing, things that you're going to do like photo shoot wise and more content production, right? And personal expenses, things that you want to buy, cars, homes, whatever. You get what I'm saying? You want to build a budget for that, a reasonable budget to see whether you're going to buy or whether you're going to rent, how you're going to secure what you buy and rent and all of this stuff. So you really got to think about that. All right. You can you can always book a call if you want to talk about that stuff. It's important to avoid overspending and falling into debt as this can jeopardize your career. OK, and this I see this happen quite often. You get the you get the check. You, you're going to do what we're going to talk about in step three. But then you go out and you splurge before the album comes out and you don't have any momentum to bring in cash flow off of other things you have to sell. That is the number one way that you overspend and you fall into debt because you end up having to borrow before the album comes out, not from the record label, but from other sources just to take care of yourself and maintain the lifestyle before the album comes out. And you still have to go on the road and work during that period. So now we got a problem. You see what I'm saying? So by creating a budget, you'll ensure that you use the events to its full potential. 
ultimately helping you achieve goals, your goals in the music industry. Before I go to the next slide, I want to say, usually when you get this record label advance, the first one, you may be known a bit, but you need to live like you don't have it just yet. Right. So penny pinch off that first advance. Live like you don't have it just yet until the pro the album promotion process starts and your attention ramps up and then you can start to spend it a little bit more. OK, now you want to handle your taxes and professional fees responsibly, because as a responsible artist, it's important to account for taxes and professional fees when managing your record label advance. That's the attorney, the accountant, the manager, you know, what I'm saying All, any, the, the financial advisor, the business manager. All of that stuff, you want to make sure these people get paid because that's going to, you know, secure your cash flow. You want to set aside the appropriate amount of money for taxes over here to avoid financial surprises down the line. So when the money comes in, you're already you just take out half 50 percent. Now, that's not your effective tax rate. That's another conversation. But just take out half. What what will end up happening is you'll probably, you know, retain 12 percent of that once tax season rolls around. But if you're signing a deal in April through June, you're right in the middle of the tax year. So you have some time to work on deductions and business structure and things like that. If you're signing a deal with an independent label in the fourth quarter, which just can happen with investors and they give you an advance as income and it's a lot of income, just take out half, bro, because you I'm telling you, like you you never made that much money before. And you're going to have to pay taxes on it. So just remove it. Don't even think about the full amount because you're going to, have to pay taxes immediately. That's why I hate signing deals at, in the fourth quarter. And that's why nobody signs them in the fourth quarter. You can be you can get into debt really, really quickly. All right. So enough of this, the side quest here. Additionally, allocate funds for your attorney and manager who typically charge 5 percent and 20 percent respectively for their services. Now, these professionals play a vital role in your music career and properly compensating them will ensure that you have a strong team supporting your success in the music industry, and this is true, like I just said, you just want to make sure your team is paid, all right? Because these wolves want to eat. I'm just saying what it is. Step four is leverage the advance to grow your fan base and brand. Now, this will go back to what I said in step one about using that advance check to do certain things with. Check it out. The record label advance provides you with the resources to invest in high quality production and marketing efforts, helping you grow your fan base and brand. Now, the record label, like I said earlier, will help you grow the music and do the marketing for the music and grow your image around selling the music. But now you have an option, depending on your deal, to take this advance and grow things with that advance for you and your personal brand personally. This is good for you because this brings in more money than your music does which is the natural cycle of things. It's supposed to happen anyway. So use these funds to produce top-notch music, eye-catching visuals, and engaging promotional campaigns that resonate with your audience. Because what can happen is you can take that advance check and you can get a top-notch mic interface just to do your vocals wherever you want to go. You can take, you can build a vocal chain and take that where you want to go. You buy camera equipment and now you got your vlogging stuff going on. You pay for editors and you got your whole content production going. So expanding your reach through touring and collaborations can also help you connect with new fans and further establish your presence in the industry. But here's the thing that you don't understand. The touring, your touring business has nothing to do with your record label. They may aid and help you in that during the album cycle. But after that, your touring business is strictly what you want to do with it. And your advance check from the record label can help you fund certain things with your tour. I'm just saying. Now, be sure to engage with your fans through social media and other platforms, building strong relationships that will support your career for years to come. OK, self-explanatory there. Now, here's step five. And this is what you got to be prepared for. Continuously learning and adapting to the ever changing music industry to stay relevant and successful in the music industry. It's crucial to keep up with new technologies and platforms that can help reach your audience more effectively. Pause. Effectively is the key. We want to reach the people more effectively. And a lot of times if we have money to keep our equipment updated, you know what I mean? Our software updated and the ways that we engage with our our fans updated and streamlined then we will reach them faster than our other players in the market that are trying to do some of the same things that we're trying to do. And I know sometimes as a creative, you say, I'm only competing with myself. 
But once you step into the market, the consumer doesn't care about what you think about what you're competing with. They're trying to make a decision on should I listen to you or them. And whoever has the best presence, customer service, experience, they're going with you first. As long as it meets their needs. You get what I'm saying? So if you're meeting the type of need for that specific type of listener, there are other people that are meeting that same need as well. And you want to be sure that you're the best one meeting that need. So you're going to have to adapt and meet the ever changing technology changes of this landscape. So you want to stay informed about music industry trends and opportunities as this knowledge will enable you to make strategic decisions and adapt to changes in the market. How do you find out about this stuff? There's a company called Media Research. This is going to be very expensive, but since you got a huge advance, you can pay for some of their reports. You can go to Billboard Pro. You can go to Music Business Worldwide to stay on top of things that are changing and then just stay on top of tech in general. OK, now embrace growth and evolution as an artist, continually refining your craft and exploring new creative avenues. OK, always do this. New plugins, new software, all this stuff. I'm just all this is part of it. You're going to need money to do this. That's what your advance is for. By staying informed and adaptable, you'll be better prepared to navigate the challenges and seize opportunities that the music industry has to offer. That's what we're going to use our advance check for. Budget, pay our team, and figure out how we're going to launch the touring business or make the touring business better, but also have money to adapt to the ever-changing strategies and techno technology of this industry now you may ask will the record label advance force me to compromise my artistic vision or creative control in order to meet the label's expectations great question big big question the record label has its expectations on where they'd like you to grow for maximum profit that they're in the business to sell music this is what they're doing you know what i'm saying they're not in the business to technically sell you they need you to sell their product which is the music and once they borrow you for you know, X amount of months after the product comes out, they're like, hey, look, we got a few more albums to sell, but you're off on your own for your touring for right now. We'll come back to you in about nine months, 12 months. We'll, we'll work on the next uh, album. But in between that, we got some singles and EPs we need you to work on. But other than that, go out and do your thing. So they want maximum profit on what it is they're giving you. But you got to stay true to yourself before you come in and you won't have to bend that much. So if you know what it is you're selling, who you are, the type of music that you're making, your market, the type of money that you make before you come in. When you ask for the advance, you won't have to bend that much, which further allows you to not compromise the artistic vision or creative control. Because if you can come in saying we're already doing this amount, our shows already look like this and they're going to say, OK, cool, let's just let's just further build on what you've already been doing. Let's not change it too much. But if you come in with too much of a blank slate, then they're going to cause you to bend more than you want to. So good question there. Now, how will the terms of the advance impact my long term financial stability and the sustainability of my music career? Well, on the recording side, it will impact it greatly because they already gave you the advance check, like I said earlier. Um, but however, your music career has many components, so it's important to get these arms of your business established before looking for a cash out or rather a cash in, so to speak. So you take in the business that you grew, you're partnering with the record label to cash in on what you built already. If you built something, they shouldn't fully buy it out unless you want them to. But if they're going to fully buy out what they're going to create with you and it's not going to be a partnership, it's probably going to affect your long term, your long term sustainability of the music career part. Like you're going to have the performing career, you're going to have everything. But what they're going to do is they're going to give you so much money up front and you're going to have it so fast that it's going to go fast. Money comes fast. Money goes fast. It is what it is because they're going to build you really, really fast when they give you a lot of money. So it's going to shorten the length of the career unless they can build you fast enough to sustain for a long time. Okay. Now, can I effectively manage the advanced funds without overspending or falling into debt, given the pressures and temptations that come with a sudden financial influx in the music industry? Remember I said money comes fast, money goes fast. The money comes so fast that you're going to be like, man, I, I got it. Let's just spend it. Let's go get this. Let's go get that. You can effectively manage the advanced funds without overspending, 
but it's going to take a financial advisor or somebody who just knows about handling finances to handle it for you, to keep you under wraps, to put you on a budget, to put you on your own salary with the money that you got so it disperses to your bank account at a, in a slow manner, to keep you at bay from spending, oh man, I just got two and a half million dollars. Now, if you got that much money, then ho I hope that you you know, understand the process of cash flow, especially in today's climate. But let's just downgrade it to two hundred and fifty thousand. And let's say that's two that two hundred fifty thousand dollars is after taxes. So roughly you got the salary of two people, you know, two well off people in the in the in the world right now in your pocket. You're gonna wanna spend that money on everything, clothes, trips, cars, or you know, a car that's a decently priced car. Like you're gonna and you're gonna be stupid enough to pay straight cash for it, which is dumb. Right. And you're going to have nobody to talk to you. And that's how you're going to overspend and fall into debt. So you need to find some consultation so you can talk to somebody so that you can win, so that you can save yourself from yourself. All right. And I say just take a few business courses online uh, to really understand financial management from a consumer pers uh, consumer's perspective. That way you can save yourself from yourself. Now, the key to getting started in building this advance, and I'm saying building this advance for a reason, is because you're going to take what is called a foundation for you to generate cash flow so that when you want to cash in on what you've built, you can get a decent advance on your future earnings. But the only way to do that, like I just said in the last question that I asked, that I that you asked, was you got to build all the processes that flow the cash back to you. So when the record label sees it, they say, oh, your music is generating this amount of cash. You already doing this much per show. You're selling this much merch. This is OK. You got a whole operation going. Well, look, let's do the two point five million dollar advance. Right. This makes sense because now as a record label, we can help you. But how are you going to do that without a foundation? And this is what I'm talking about. I put something together called a 60 day record label course. It's a framework to establish your record label in a perfect 60 day sequence. So learn how to set up your LLC and bank account flawlessly. Set up your records and publishing division to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15 percent. Yes, your publishing needs to stay clean in order to get the type of advance that I'm talking about. And then you want to utilize the contract templates to get you in the game right away because we need to acquire pieces of copyright so that we own it as we grow bigger. Now, what's covered is BMI, ASCAP, Sound Exchange, the MLC, Music Reports, Harry Fox Agency, Luminate, All Music, ISRC.com, some of the music distributors out there, and more. And it's just for a low price of $275 or five easy payments of $55, all right? But I just want to let you know that I do have your hand in this. So book a call with me after you do that or before you do it, and let's develop a strategy for you to move forward, all right? Now, grab the free stuff below if this is your first time watching the channel. But I want to show you the big winning picture here. This is what it looks like. You'll have an understanding of the terms of the advance. You'll be able to create a budget and allocate the advance wisely. And this is not your record label budget. This is strictly your advance. OK, once you do that, you can pay the taxes, the attorney and the manager. All right. And then you'll leverage the advance to grow your fan base and brand. You can stay focused on your artistic vision and continuously learn and adapt to the ever changing music industry just by being calm. I know it's a lot of money that's going to be thrown at you, but you got to be calm with this thing. All right. But ultimately, this is the failure aspect of it. Mismanaging the advance and falling into debt. This is the worst place you want to be in. Failing to establish a good rapport with the record label, not networking with them, talking with them, and then losing sight of your artistic vision and becoming too commercialized. Because once you lose the money and you don't really know the record label like that, you just kind of know your A&R and that's pretty much it. Like You haven't met anybody else in the building. You're going to lose sight because you spend all the money of your artistic vision and you're going to start doing things for money. And then that's going to be the wrong position that you want to be in. This is where you want to be right here in understanding these six things. All in all, if you follow some of the tips that I've discussed in today's video, you'll go from an insecure recording artist about money and your record label advance to one who's much more mature in handling that advance check to leverage it to build your career. All right. So you can go forth in this ever changing music industry landscape. And that's what I want you to do. So music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Join the 60 day record label course. Download the 60 day record label book. All right. Grab the free stuff below and book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com. And I'll see you next time. Peace.